What's up guys? So welcome to my backyard. For any of you that want to be able to do a real chest workout, I don't, I'm not talking about some sort of like kind of get it in workout because I can't make it to the gym. No, I'm talking about a real workout that you can do anytime, any place. That means if you're at home, you want to do it in the backyard like I am now, you want to do it in the house, you want to do it in the office, if you're traveling, you want to do it in the hotel, this is that workout for you. So we're going to go through, I'm going to share with you some of my favorite chest exercises using only resistance bands. This is the bag that I travel with, so I can throw this in my suitcase, throw it in my backpack, take it with me wherever I go. So I've been training with resistance bands exclusively for the last year and a half. So I'm going to share with you my favorite out of all of them that I do. And there's all kinds of exercises you can do with resistance bands. Anything that I can do in a gym, I can mimic that same movement with resistance bands. If you've ever trained with loop style resistance bands, you want to make sure that you wear gloves. In all my years of weight training, I never trained with gloves, but there's something about resistance bands that just the friction, it will take the skin right off your hands. So make sure that you use gloves. I like full finger gloves because a lot of times you are getting a lot of contact with your fingers. In my bag, I also have this guy right here. This is a door anchor. So on the end, it's this nice soft spongy foam. And on the other end, is a loop. This is a super awesome tool for being able, being able to train wherever you want to train. And I'm going to show you how I use it uh, for our anchored exercises. So I'm going to show you some unanchored exercises, meaning we just use our body to anchor the bands and then some are anchored. Now, if I was in a park and I had a pull-up bar, I could go ahead and I can anchor the bands to that. But with a door anchor, anywhere that you've got a door, you can use this as an anchor point. So I'm going to show you some of those exercises. So let's jump into this. I'm going to get started here. Dump all my bands on the floor. We're going to start with an unanchored exercise. And this one's a really simple one. You're going to be like, ah, oh, that's so simple. That's too easy. Ha, think again. We're going to be doing push ups using the bands. Now, if you do these the right way, you think, oh, there's no way a push up compares to, say, doing a bench press. You'd be surprised. So, just like all my other routines that I do, I do four sets of every exercise. So we're going to follow my traditional rep structure, which is a 20, 10, 10, 15, meaning 20 reps the first time, moving into set two, which is 10 reps, set three, 10 reps again, and then finishing off with 15 reps, but we're doing them explosively, which is something you can do with resistance bands, which is a little more challenging with free weights because you have momentum stripping the resistance. So you can't do that with free weights or with bands. So that's one of the advantages. So we're going to take advantage of that. Uh, with that being said, set number one is not a warm up set. A lot of people think, oh, you're doing 20 reps. That must be a warm up. No, this is not a warm up. This is a working set. Why do I do 20 reps? One, this is to set the tempo for the rest of the workout. When you go just a little bit lighter, you can focus on good solid form, meaning peak contractions. I actually did a video recently talking about the importance of peak contractions, getting constant tension through the range of motion, which also leads into another conversation, which is time under tension. So make sure you check out some of those videos. But what I see is a lot of people rushing through the reps and they don't get peak contractions. They don't really work the isometric contraction. They're not even really working their eccentric contractions. So what we're going to do here is we're going to focus on 20 hard reps. In other words, by 10, you should already be tired and you're going to squeeze out 10 more of them. So now a lot of people struggle getting into position with a band. They kind of do this maneuver right here. It's actually a whole lot easier than that. So you want to bring the band across your back, not too high because then it's going to come off. You don't want to go too low. So I like to just get it right across my shoulder blades, just like that. Put your hands down in position, then kick your feet out. So here we go. 20 good reps, chest all the way to the ground, full extension. So good, solid concentric, a nice squeeze at the top your isometric, and then a good controlled eccentric. One more. I'll tell you what, if you do those the right way, they're so much harder than you think. 
Now, how do you choose the right level of resistance? Common question you get with bands. Well, one, you gotta learn to train by feel. Don't worry about how much weight it is. Too many people get focused on the numbers on the dumbbell or how much something weighs, how much does the bar weigh. Don't worry about the weight. Worry about how it feels. Worry about getting good contractions every single rep. You should get to the end of your set and be really right at that edge of almost hitting failure. So even if you're training with weights, you need to adopt that same philosophy. The best physique athletes in the world don't train by numbers, they train by feel. So that's set number one. Whew. Even if I stuck to this same band, sets two and sets three for 10 reps each, still gonna be hard. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna challenge myself here, add a little bit. We'll see how this goes. I may have to make some adjustments. So this right here is the extra heavy band. So I'm gonna do that in combination with the medium band. Just like you stack weights, you can stack bands. Just like that. Oh yeah, I can already tell this is gonna be hard. I get about 90 seconds rest. That's what I like. Keeps the intensity up through my workout. Keeps my total workout time shorter. Remember, the more you rest, the longer your workout is. But if you also have less rest time, you're keeping your heart rate up more, then theoretically, you're also burning more calories in your workout as well, because I hate doing cardio. Okay, here we go, 10 reps. <clears throat> now, like I said, first set, you're setting the stage for the quality of reps and the quality of contraction. So I want you to focus on the same thing. Just because we're going heavier now, doesn't mean that we get sloppy. <sighs> so you see, I couldn't even get the 10th one there. That was, that was nine and a half. What I'm gonna do here for this next set, since I didn't get 10, and that is my goal, I'm gonna drop from this medium to this guy right here, which is the light band. So I'm gonna do the extra heavy plus the light. Now the big thing here when doing push-ups, what do most people do when they do push-ups? They think about how many can I do? How many push-ups? And they'll do it at all costs, meaning sloppy form. So they're not going all the way down. It also means that they're not squeezing all the way up. And what I want you to do is as you get to the top, don't just press it here. I want you to think about squeezing your chest together. Almost think about bringing your hands together. Obviously you're not going to because they're planted firmly on the ground. But imagine if you could squeeze your hands closer together because that's what your chest does is help bring your arm across your body. When we're doing bench press or even push-ups, you can see that even at the top of the range of motion, we're not getting all the way across our body. So you can at least get a peak contraction by squeezing together, getting a good isometric squeeze at the top. Now keep in mind, you're not gonna be able to do as many push-ups as you could if you just repped them out. So it's not about numbers, not about how many you can do, not about how fast you can do, it's about the quality of every single rep. That was 90 seconds. Jump into set three. All the way down, all the way up. Nice isometric contraction. Ah. Three. Four. Ah. Five. Oh man, I got five more. Six. <sighs> okay, here's a cool little trick. Couldn't get the seventh, right? What do I do? Get rid of the band. It's like doing a drop set. If you ever do drop sets with dumbbells, so all you do is you drop the weight a little bit. So we're at six, so I got four more. Seven. Oh man. That was a crappy eight. So what are we gonna do? Same thing, I'm gonna go from the extra heavy right here to the heavy. Finish off those two reps. Whew, feeling my chest already. Here we go. Nine. 
There's 10. Just think this is just exercise one. But hey, bands are easy, right? Can't build muscle with bands. If you have doubts that bands can build muscle, make sure to check out some of the other videos that I do on the subject, comparing free weights to resistance bands, but also what the triggers for muscle hypertrophy or muscle building, what they really are, because it's not just about lifting heavier. So just know that you can build the same kind of muscle with bands that you can with free weights. All right, here's what we're gonna do. The last set, and this one's hard. We're going back to our original weight, or in this case, original resistance level, which is the extra heavy band here. And we're gonna do 15 reps, but we're going to do these explosively. We're really going to fire those fast twitch muscle fibers. And remember your fast twitch muscle fibers are also the ones that make you run faster and jump higher, but also are the ones that get bigger. They're the ones that grow. So, whew, same setup. What I want you to do though is control these. Just because we're doing them fast, don't do them sloppy but we're gonna do them roughly double time. This is gonna pump a lot of blood into the muscle. And again, that's a, a trigger in itself for muscle hypertrophy. They call that metabolic stress. What starts to happen here is you switch over into anaerobic metabolism and your body starts to build up lactate and other metabolites in the muscle. And then of course, a lot of blood comes in to flush out those metabolites. And this is what we call the pump. And the pump is a trigger for muscle growth. So this is gonna give you a good pump. Here we go. Psych yourself up. 15 explosive ones. One, two, three, four, five, 14. Oh man. Oh, yeah. That's just exercise one. It's a good time to take a drink of water, gather your composure, and get ready for the next exercise. Now, with resistance bands, we're not reinventing the wheel here. We're not really training any different than we would train with weights or machines. Same concept here, same kind of split, same kind of exercise variety. And with that being said, we're gonna be doing two compound movements. So we just did one of them. So remember a push up is a compound movement. We're not just using our chest, we're also using our anterior delts and our triceps as well. We're gonna move into another compound movement, which is another press. Before we move into some of our isolation exercises to really target our chest. So this next one is a single arm incline press. And we're gonna use our door anchor here. Now, just like you'd approach in the gym doing bench press, and then you'd move to incline to target upper chest. We're gonna do the exact same thing. So first, let me show you how to use this guy. All you need is any door. It doesn't have to be a door like this, any kind of door. Open the door, take the soft foam end, put it through the door, Make sure that the strap is flat against the door. Simply close it. That's it. Now, because we're gonna be doing a incline press, that means I want my angle of pull to be going up. So what I'm gonna do is go lower with this. And that's one of the cool things is we can anchor this at all, all sorts of positions. I could anchor it really low. If I want to do some back movements, let's say I want to do straight arm push downs, I could anchor it up high. So, we're gonna anchor it down here, just about hip height, maybe a little bit lower. I'm gonna take this extra heavy band, and the way you do this, run it right through the loop in the anchor, just a little bit, just enough where you create a loop here, and then you're running the band through itself. Just like that. Normally, I like to do this the opposite way. So when I close the door, when I'm doing the exercise, it's pulling the door closed, not the opportunity for the door to open. So this door swings out. So if I pull on it and it wasn't latched, it would open. You don't want that. 
You don't want the door anchor smacking you in the back of the head. So make sure your door is actually shut. Okay. Loop your hand right through. What we're going to do, the foot that's on the same side as your hand, that one's going to go back. Step far enough forward where you start to get a good stretch on your chest. Don't turn your body this way. I want you to square up your body, and by doing so, you're going to feel that tension on your chest. So the key to resistance band training is you need resistance all the way through the range of motion. People say, yeah, but there's not enough at the bottom. I'm doing curls, and it's too easy. Well, that's because you're not stretching the band enough. So in an anchored exercise like this, you just step further away. You have linear variable resistance, meaning the more I stretch this, the harder I get, or the harder it gets. So if I want more resistance, I step further away. If it's a little too hard, I can step a little bit closer and it'll be easier. So you're gonna have to kind of feel this out. Set one, 10 reps, or not 10 reps, sorry. I'm already spacing out here, the push-ups wore me out. 20, 10, 10, 15. So we got 20 reps here. We'll see how this feels with the extra heavy. I might have to drop down to the heavy. All right, so square up your chest. You can place your other hand right on your thigh here and brace yourself. There's one thing that people aren't used to with resistance bands. You have to stabilize yourself. And this is why it's great functional strength is because you have to transfer all that power from the ground up through your legs and through your core. You have to stabilize here. All right, that's what it's gonna look like. So we're coming up to about this height right here. Full extension. Step forward a little bit. I want a little more tension. Five. You want to feel Eight. enough resistance at the very back. Seven. If you don't, just step Eight. forward a little bit, stretch the band a little bit. You'll get more resistance. You got to feel tension at the back. You want to stretch here, adjust your foot position to get the right tension. And then make sure you really get that isometric squeeze. In other words, don't just push forward here. I want you to think about pushing towards your midline. See the difference between pushing here versus pushing here. Remember, again, our chest brings our arm across our body. So if we want to really get that peak contraction, think about pushing towards your midline. Just like our push-ups. now we're going to bump up the resistance. Set number two, we're going to do 10 reps. Same thing with set number three. Now, here's the thing. I got a couple options here. Again, remember that bands have linear variable resistance. So this isn't just constant resistance level, meaning the same amount of resistance no matter what. Linear variable resistance, so the more I stretch it, the harder it is. So if I want to make this harder, I can just step further away use this exact same band and step up in resistance and get my 10 reps. So I'm going to try that first. Now, here's where it gets a little bit tricky. I'm going to share with you something that most people don't talk about with resistance bands. The more I pre-stretch this, the more I'm taking the variable resistance out of it. So at the beginning of the range of motion, it's almost as hard as at the end. So I've got two options here. I can pre-stretch it more, and then I'm taking out that linear variable resistance, and it's going to be hard all the way at the back here, all the way through. Or if I want more linear variable resistance, I'm just going to go ahead and add another band to it and not pre-stretch it as much. So that's kind of a whole video in itself, so I'll probably tackle that subject another day. So this is about where I started before, my feet. I can feel that tension right, huh? maybe not, let me see. Yeah, this is my starting point from before. It doesn't take much, so I'm gonna creep up a half a step, and I can already feel the difference. Here we go. Oh yeah, one, two, three, four. Come all the way back, get that stretch. Five, six, Eight, nine, uh, uh, ten. Jeez. So you can see by stretching it just a little bit more, created a whole lot more resistance. 
One of the challenging things about doing presses like this with bands is that you have to stabilize yourself. And that's the thing that a lot of people aren't familiar with. They're used to having the luxury of bracing themselves on a bench somehow, you know, laying down or sitting down. So you have nothing to brace yourself with. So that's what makes it a challenge. The flip side is, like we talked about, you're developing that core strength and that stability. Now you can take all this strength and apply it to things. Think about if you're a martial artist, where do they tell you all your punching power comes from, right? So it's, it's in your lower body and it's in your core. So now we're developing functional strength. So if you're an athlete, this is especially important. That's why the best athletes in the world incorporate resistance bands into their training. Yeah. All right, I want you to remember every single rep counts. It's not just about your set. It's about every rep. Take advantage of the three kinds of contractions. You're concentric, but then get that isometric squeeze, really get a peak contraction, then a nice controlled eccentric. So get, get all three of those. A lot of times what people do is they rush it. Boom, boom. So there's the concentric, but there's no isometric squeeze and there's no controlled eccentric. So it's not just about controlling it. You gotta think about time under tension. That's the other major variable there. So if I go out and it's one second and one second back, that's two seconds per rep, multiplied by 10 reps, that's only 20 seconds of time under tension. You need about 30 to 70 seconds of time under tension per set for maximum muscle hypertrophy. So change it up, 10 reps, one second, a second hold on your isometric and a two second eccentric, you just doubled your time under tension there to four seconds per rep times 10, now you're at 40 seconds. So that falls right in that 30 to 70 seconds. So it's not just about controlling your eccentric just for the sake of controlling it for good form. There's a reason you wanna do it. With that being said, we're moving in to kicking our water bottle. We are moving into our fourth set of these. Just like our push-up, we're gonna make these explosive. Now think about time under tension again. We're going back to 15 reps. But think about time under tension here. Because we're doing them faster, just because we're doing 15 doesn't mean that this is muscular endurance. No, we're still falling into that 30 to 70 seconds of total time under tension. So there's still muscle building benefits here, not to mention metabolic stress, which is what we talked about, that pump. Doing these reps is gonna give you that pump, gonna be a trigger for muscle growth. So we're gonna strip off this light band. We're gonna go back to just the extra heavy band and we're gonna blast out 15 explosive presses. All right, maybe doing them fast, but remember, good form. Here we go. Keep holding on to the band, it'll keep you from falling over. Other side. I don't want you coming all the way back. I want you to cut it short, just a little bit. So full squeeze, come back three quarters of the way. Why? Want to keep nice constant tension. You don't want that band going tight and slack, tight and slack. We want tension throughout the whole thing. So almost think about like pumping these out, constant tension the whole time. That is our two compound movements. So now we're moving into our isolation exercises. So instead of presses, where we're using our triceps and our delts, we're gonna try to focus just on our chest. And that means movements where we're bringing our arm more across our body. Think about when you look at someone bench press and you look at the contraction in their chest versus when they do cable flies. Think about the difference. When they do cable flies, that's when you see all the muscle striations and the veins are popping out. It's just a much stronger contraction. Now, a lot of people are confused when it comes to muscle contractions. There's a bit of truth that gets distorted, which is people say, well, you can only contract your muscle all at the same time. Well, yeah, you can't contract just part of your chest. You're gonna contract the whole thing as far as the length, but that doesn't mean 
that you're activating all of those motor units. You have to have peak contractions in order to activate as many of those muscle fibers as possible. Think about it. This is what allows us to do fine motor skills like drawing or putting a spoon into our mouth without jabbing ourselves in the eye, right? We have the ability to do smaller movements with those muscles or more explosive, stronger movements. Basically our brain and the electrical system, which is our nervous system, can fire different muscle fibers at different times. And so our goal is to fire as many of those as possible, to activate as many of those as possible. In order to do that, you wanna get full range of motion, you wanna get maximum resistance at that peak contraction. So that's what we're gonna focus on here. I'm gonna open the door and I'm gonna anchor this right at chest height here. And we're gonna start off with, let's try the small one to start. Now I'm showing you exercises that you can do with just one anchor point and with just one band. Now with flies, if I were say in, uh, in a pull-up bar, I could anchor separate bands on both sides, step through and do flies. But we're gonna do a single arm fly here, one anchor point. The reason I went with the small band is I've got a lot of options here. One, I can just step further away to create more resistance or I've got another option which is just simply shortening the length of the band. So I'm gonna do a combination of both. I'm gonna take a little bit of this slack out. We wanna make sure that we have good tension here at the beginning, so you should feel this band pulling against you at this point. It shouldn't be slack like this. It's too easy here in the beginning of the, the movement. So tension here in the very beginning. Chest, you wanna stick it out, keep your chin up, and we're gonna squeeze all the way across the middle of our body. Notice I got my hand here on my chest. I want to feel that peak contraction. Get that mind muscle connection. Three, 20 reps. Four. <clears throat> oh man, it's 20. Now if I were doing say cable crossovers, I am coming more across the middle, but usually what ends up happening, your arms hit each other. You've got limited range of motion here. What I like about doing singles is I can come much further across my body, get more of a peak contraction there. Do the other side now. Whether you're using bands, free weights, common mistake that I see people making when doing any kind of fly with cables or a crossover is it starts to look like this right here. This is not chest, this is all triceps right here. Anytime you see this, if you get a lot of movement at the elbow, that's triceps. So you wanna go ahead and try to keep your arms in a fixed position. They don't have to be perfectly straight, just a slight bend. So again, if you're doing any kind of flyer crossover, it should look like this. You really wanna get that peak contraction there. Really squeeze your chest. It's almost like you see bodybuilders do a most muscular. That's what they're doing, trying to get that peak contraction. Again, two different options to adjust your resistance. Either I can step further away, step closer, or grab it closer to the anchor point. And the nice thing is you can do it right in the middle of your set. Let's say I start here and I do a couple reps. I'm like, oh my God, it's too heavy. All I have to do is just let a little bit of the band out and adjust it. So you can adjust your resistance on the fly. If they're dumbbells, you'd have to go set the dumbbells down and get another set. Here you just make those small adjustments or same thing with your feet. You wanna feel every muscle that you train. You shouldn't go through a workout and just feel tired. You should actually feel the fatigue and the pump within that muscle. That's the difference between like strength building, power lifting, versus what we call bodybuilding. With bodybuilding, you're sculpting. You're putting muscle where you want to put muscle, which means it requires, like I said, that mind-muscle connection and that focus, being able to really target muscles. I always tell people all the time that if you were pushing your car, if you ran out of gas, would you rather push the car by yourself or would you have three friends help you? Of course, you'd rather have three friends help you. It's gonna be easier to do. Well, your body's the same way. 
If you do a movement, your body wants to recruit as many muscles as possible for the movement. So it requires a lot of discipline, a lot of focus to override that and to just really focus on the one muscle that you're trying to train, not recruit other muscles. So when we talk about isolation, that's what we're talking about. It's almost, it's that mind muscle connection slash discipline. We're gonna do our third set, 10 reps each side, just like set two before moving on to our fourth and final set, which you already know what it is. It's gonna be 15 explosive reps. All right, that was our third exercise. We just have one exercise to go. Now, I showed you one compound movement that was unanchored, which was our push-up. Now, I like unanchored exercises because I can do those anywhere. For example, just recently I went on a trip and I did a full workout on top of a mountain. Obviously, I didn't have a door or a pull-up bar on top of a mountain, so it's nice to be able to have exercises that you can do without relying on a door anchor or tying the band off to something. So that's what an unanchored exercise is. So we did one unanchored chest movement, a compound movement, that was our push-up. Then we came in and we did an anchored compound movement, which was our incline press. We did an anchored isolation just now. So now I'm gonna show you an unanchored isolation exercise for chest. First thing, we're gonna anchor this right underneath our feet. You got a couple options here for increasing the resistance. One, we know that if we shorten the length of the band, we create more resistance. So by the width of my stance, you can tell I'm shortening the band. So we can adjust it on the fly by adjusting our stance, but we can also adjust on the fly by how far down. See how there's all this loose slack band in the middle versus grabbing up here. So we can make little adjustments on the fly to create the right resistance. Now I showed you this exercise, if you watched the video I did where we were out paddle boarding one day, I showed a complete total body workout and we did this exact same movement. Now we're just doing it here in a chest specific workout. But what it's gonna look like, just in case you haven't seen the video, chest out nice and high and we're gonna bring our arms straight up in front of us and together. So they're not just coming straight out here, they're coming to the center line, just like that. You wanna keep your arms nice and straight and really squeeze to the middle. <clears throat> so you wanna make sure you got good resistance down here. If you need more, again, just grab lower down. <clears throat> One more. Now, we talked about doing a most muscular bodybuilders coming in here like this to squeeze their chest. There's a second style most muscular you'll see guys do and they'll come from the bottom up like this. Same thing, you wanna focus on really squeezing your chest. Here's what I don't wanna see as you're doing these though. The movement is not in your arms. In other words, it doesn't look like this. I don't wanna see any movement at the elbow. So instead of thinking about bringing your hands up, because if you focus on your hands, you're gonna have a tendency to use your biceps here to bring it up like this. So focus on bringing your elbows up. So elbows up, squeeze toward the center, pinky to pinky, right out in front of you. Chin height, just like that. We're almost done with this workout. Okay, you already know the drill by now. How many reps are we doing this next set? Yeah, you guessed it. 10 reps, 10 good reps here. Really focus on squeezing that chest every rep. This is home stretch now, make this count. A lot of people feel make the mistake of they rush their last sets just to get done with the workout, but you've worked this hard to get to this point. You've worked this hard to get the muscle this tired, so this is when you wanna come in and you wanna finish strong. <clears throat> wanna keep good form. <clears throat> ah, there it is. Mm. Feeling it. Gonna be sore tomorrow. I don't think I need to tell you how many reps we're gonna do on our third set. 
you got the routine down. 90 seconds rest, shake it off, toughen up, suck it up. <sighs> Six is my marker. If it's too easy, then I'm gonna grab a little bit more of the band. If it's too hard, I'm gonna loosen up. Eight. Nine. You don't see it because it's subtle, but that's why I'm usually able to finish right on the mark, like hitting that wall where it's just like almost that point of total failure. Why is it that I always hit my mark with my reps? It's because I'm making those little adjustments on the fly, you just can't really see it. In between each rep, if I feel like it's too easy, I'm subtly grabbing just a little bit more, or if it's a little bit too hard, I'm loosening it up just a little bit. So adjusting that resistance. So when people say, well, you know, that's the thing that I don't like about resistance bands, it's not a fixed weight, doesn't have a number on it, you're right, it doesn't. But with everything in life, it's a double-edged sword, there's the good and there's the bad. So the bad, yeah, you're right, it's not one fixed level of resistance. The good is, it's not one fixed level of resistance. So it makes it easy to really maximize the, the value of every single set. And if you don't want it smacking you in your junk, just take out some of that slack. No one likes to be smacked in the junk with a band. Maybe some people do, not me. All right, that's it. That was our complete chest workout. Now those are just four of my favorite exercises with chest. There's actually, I can't even really call them my favorite. Those are four that I use a lot. I've got a lot of other exercises. If you happen to follow the TA2 build program that I put together for resistance bands, there's a ton of other chest exercises in there. A lot of different variations, different angles, etc. But uh, those are four that if you got a set of bands, you can take your chest workout anywhere you want. Like we talked about in the beginning, take it to the beach, take it to your backyard, take it on a trip. You could travel around the world with a set of bands and get a workout wherever you are. And that's one of the things that I love about bands is that freedom to be able to train wherever I want and still get an awesome workout. This wasn't some sort of subpar, you know, workout that like, well, it's better than not getting a workout at all. No, that was just as good as any chest workout that I get in the gym. I feel the same kind of fatigue. I feel the same kind of pump, the same kind of burn. So that's it. I'm James Grage and this has been RBT Resistance Band Training. I'll see you guys next week. We got more cool videos coming your way, so make sure you subscribe, make sure you turn on notifications so you don't miss any future videos. And I'll see you guys soon.